Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you, Rachel. I've always been proud to be your uncle, but I am, I am especially proud today. Uh, I also want to thank our hosts here at the Cooper Union for the advancement of science and art. I think it's fair to say that no institution of higher learning has had a more profound effect on the course of American history than Cooper Union by opening its doors uh, to its great hall across the street to Abraham Lincoln, and Frederick Douglass, and Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and so many other pioneering leaders, and by hosting the founding of the NAACP. Cooper Union has helped push American freedom even higher and ever wider. Today, we gather in this innovative and striking new academic building, a symbol of how Cooper Union has always looked forward and always championed progress. We gather in the tradition of those who came before us to discuss a momentous question before our nation and our great state of New York. Should government permit men and women of the same sex to marry? It's a question that really cuts to the core of who we are as a country and as a city. It is a question that de deserves to be answered here in New York which was the birthplace of the gay rights movement more than 40 years ago. It's a question that requires us to step back from the platitudes and partisanship of everyday political debate and consider the principles that must lead us forward. The principles that have guided our nation since its founding, freedom, liberty, equality, are the principles that have animated generations of Americans to expand opportunity to an ever wider circle of our citizenry. At our founding, African Americans were held in bondage. Catholics in New York could not hold office. Those without property could not vote. Women could not vote or hold office. And homosexuality was, in some places, a crime punishable by death. One by one, over many long years, the legal prohibitions to freedom and equality were overcome, some on the battlefield, some at the State House, and some in the courthouse. Throughout our history, each and every generation has expanded on the freedoms won by our parents and grandparents. Each and every generation has removed some barrier to full participation in the American dream. Each and every generation has helped our country take another step on the road to a more perfect union for all its citizens. That is the arc of American history. That is the march of freedom. That is the journey that we must never stop traveling. And that is the reason that we are here today. The next great barrier standing before our generation is the prohibition on marriage for same-sex couples. The question is, why now? And why New York? I believe both answers start at the Stonewall Inn. When the village erupted in protest 42 years ago next month, New York and every other state in the nation, save one, still had laws in the books that same-sex relationships were a crime. A couple could go to prison for years just for being intimate in the privacy of their own homes. For men and women of that era, an era many of us remember well, being in a gay relationship meant living in fear. Fear of police harassment, fear of public humiliation, fear of workplace discrimination, fear of physical violence. Today, in some places, those fears still linger. But as a nation, we've come a long way since Stonewall. Today, two women in a committed relationship, who years ago would have hidden their relationship from family and friends, will instead take part in a wed wedding ceremony in front of their families and friends. Today, two men who are longtime partners, who years ago would never have entertained the idea, will adopt a child and begin a family. Both events are possible because thousands of courageous individuals risked everything to come out and speak out. And because they did, because they organized and protested, because they poured their hearts out to friends and families and neighbors, they stood up for their rights and marched for equality and ran for office. Laws banning same-sex relationships have been struck down by the Supreme Court. 
More than 20 states have adopted laws that prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation. And beginning this year, patriotic men and women will be able to enlist in the U.S. military without having to hide their identity. We owe all of these pioneers a deep debt of gratitude. And although the work is far from over, there is no doubt we have passed the tipping point. Today, a majority of Americans support equal marriage, marriage equality. And young people increasingly view marriage equality in much the same way as young people in the 1960s viewed civil rights. Eventually, as happened with civil rights for African Americans, there will be a majority of voters, and they will pass laws that reflect their values and elect presidents who personify them. It is not a matter of if, but when. And the question for every New York State lawmaker is, do you want to be remembered as a leader on civil rights or an obstructionist? Remember, on matters of freedom and equality, history has not remembered obstructionists kindly, not on abolition, not on abortion, not on women's suffrage, not on workers' rights, not on civil rights, and it will be no different on marriage rights. Why now? Because this is our time to stand up for equality. This is our time to conquer the next frontier of freedom. This is our time to be bold and brave as pioneers who came before us were. And this is our time to lead the American journey forward. You know, it's fitting that the gay rights movement began in our city because New York has always been at the forefront of movements to expand American freedoms and guarantee American liberties. Long before our, family father, our founding fathers wisely decided to separate church from state, leading citizens of our city petitioned their colonial rulers for religious freedom. Long before Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, Many New Yorkers, including the founder of this college, Peter Cooper, crusaded against slavery. Long before the nation adopted the 19th Amendment, New Yorkers helped lead the, moment for the movement for women's suffrage. And long before the Civil Rights Act of 1964, New Yorkers played a pivotal role in advancing a colorblind society. So why should New York lead on marriage equality right now? Because we have always led the charge for freedom, and we have always led by example. No place in the world is more committed to freedom of expression, religious, artistic, political, social, personal, than New York City. And no place in the world is more welcoming to all people, no matter what their ethnicity or orientation. That's what, is, that's what always has set us apart. In our city, there is no shame in being true to yourself. There is only pride. We take you as you are, and we let you be who you wish to be. That's the essence of New York City. That is what makes us a safe haven for people of every background and orientation, and a magnet for talented and creative people. It's the reason, reason we are the economic engine for the country, and the greatest city in the world. But it is up to us to keep it that way. As other states recognize the rights of same-sex couples to marry, we cannot stand by and watch. To do, to do so would betray our civic values and history, and it would harm our competitive edge in the global economy. This is an issue of democratic principles, but make no mistake, it carries economic consequences as well. We are the freest city in the freest country in the world. But freedom is not frozen in time. And if we are to remain the freest city with the most dynamic and innovative economy, we must lead on this issue, just as we have on so many other matters of fundamental civil rights. Now, in talking to state legislators who do not yet support marriage equality, I can sense that many of them are searching their souls for answers. And in all fairness, they are torn. Like all of us, they have friends and families and colleagues who are gay and lesbian. They know gay and lesbian couples who are deeply in love with each other, many of whom are loving and devoted parents as well. They know those couples yearn to be seen and treated as equal to all other couples. And they often hear from their own families, especially their children, this is a civil rights issue. I hope they listen carefully to their kids and make them proud with their foresight and courage. Now, I understand the desire of some to seek guidance from their religious teachings, 
But this is not a religious issue. This is a civil issue. And that is why under the bill proposed in Albany, no church or synagogue or mosque would be required to perform or sanction a same-sex wedding, as is the case in every other state that has legalized marriage equality. Some faith communities would perform them, others would not. That's their right. I have enormous respect for religious leaders on both sides of the issue. But government has no business taking sides in these debates, none. As private individuals, we may be a part of a faith community that forbids divorce or birth control or alcohol. But as public citizens, we do not impose those prohibitions on society. We may place our personal faith in the Torah or the New Testament or the Koran or anything else. But as a civil society, we place our public faith in the U.S. Constitution, the principles and protections that define it, and the values that have guided its evolution. As, as elected leaders, our responsibility is not to any one creed or congregation, but to all citizens. It is my hope that a majority of the state Senate will recognize that supporting marriage equality is not only consistent with our civic principles, it is consistent with conservative principles. Conservatives believe that government should not intrude into people's personal lives. And it's just none of the government's business who you love. Conservatives also believe that government should not stand in the way of free markets and private associations, including contracts between consenting parties. And that's exactly what marriage is, a contract, a legal bond between two adults who vow to support one another in sickness and in health. There is no state interest in denying one class of couples a right to that contract. Just the opposite, in fact. Marriage has always been a force for stability in families and communities because it fosters responsibility. And that's why conservatives promote marriage. And that's why marriage equality would be healthy for society, healthy for couples, and healthy for children. Right now, sadly, children of some same-sex couples often ask their parents, why haven't you gotten married like all of our friends' partner, parents? And that's a heartbreaking question to answer. And it's an early expression of the profound principle that sets our country apart, that all people are created equal, with equal rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's the American dream. But for gay and lesbian couples, it is still only that, a dream. The plain reality is, if we are to recognize same-sex and opposite-sex couples as, equal, as equals, that equality must extend to obtaining civil marriage licenses. Now, some people ask, why not just grant gay couples civil unions? And that's a fair and honest question, but the answer is simply unavoidable. Long ago, the Supreme Court declared that separate but equal opportunities are inherently unequal. It took the Supreme Court nearly 60 years after Plessy versus Ferguson, which upheld disparate treatment of non-whites to come to that conclusion, but justice finally prevailed. It took the Supreme Court another 13 years to strike down laws barring interracial marriage, and another 36 after that to strike down laws criminalizing same-sex relationships. You know, the march for equality and tolerance in America has sometimes been slow, but it has never stopped. Since our nation's earliest days, when the Congress first adopted the Bill of Rights, the Constitution's protections of liberty have grown broader and stronger, and the law of the land has grown increasingly neutral on matters of race, nationality, gender, and sexual orientation. The inexorable progress is the genius of our constitutional system. In fact, we have had major social change without violence because the revolution that we seek is contained within our founding documents. We have no king to overthrow, only our own ideals to live up to. In the weeks ahead, I continue to do everything I can to convince our state legislators to take the long view and consider their place in history and consider the kind of world they want to leave their children. Governor Cuomo and Governor Patterson both deserve great credit for advancing this issue in Albany. And I strongly believe that just as New Yorkers are discussing and debating it openly, so should both houses of the state legislature. That's democracy.
And the essence of democracy is a public debate and a public vote. New Yorkers have a right to know where their elected officials stand. We deserve a vote, not next year or after the 2012 elections, but in this legislative session. Now, there's a reason that I'm so passionate about this issue and so determined to push for change. I see the pain the status quo causes, and I can't defend it. When I meet a New Yorker who is gay, when I speak with members and family members of my staff who are gay, when I look into the eyes of my niece, Rachel, I cannot tell them that their government is correct in, deny in denying them the right to marry. I can't tell them that marriage is not for them. I can't tell them that a civil union is good enough. In our democracy, near equality is no equality. Government either treats everyone the same or it doesn't. And right now, it doesn't. Tonight, Tonight two New Yorkers who are in a committed relationship will come home cook dinner, help their kids with their homework, and turn in for the night. They want desperately to be married, not for the piece of paper they will get, not for the ceremony or the reception or the wedding cake, but for the recognition that lifelong commitment they have made to each other is not less than anyone else's, not second class in any ways. They want it not just for themselves, but for their children. They want their children to know that their family is as healthy and legitimate as all other families. And that desire for equal standing in society is extraordinarily powerful, and it has led to extraordinary advances in American freedom. It has never been defeated. It can't be defeated. And on marriage equality, it will not be defeated. There is no retreating to a past that has disappeared. There is no holding back a wave that has crested, and there's no denying a freedom that belongs to all of us. The time has come for us to fulfill the dreams that exploded into Sheraton Square 42 years ago, to allow thousands of men and women to become full members of the American family, and to take the next step on the inspiring journey our founding fathers first began. Together, we can work across the aisle, to pass a bill allowing all New Yorkers to walk down the aisle and lead our state and country towards a more perfect union. This is something that we have to do, and we have to do it right now. We are Americans, and this is what America stands for. Thank you very much.